Hey guys, Kyle here with Gnarly Knives. Today we're going to take a look at the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, giving you guys a full review on it. I've had this knife for a couple years now, and I absolutely love this thing. Uh, just some basic specs to get us started off. The knife overall is 8 and a quarter inches long. You have a 3 and a half inch blade with a 3 inch cutting edge. This knife is, you can go for around $120 to $130. Right now on Amazon it is going for $130. The prices do fluctuate, but I've always found it to be in the $120 to $130 range, at least for this style right here with the black G10 handles and the S30V blade steel. Uh, you can also get it with the camouflage handle and it does have a black coating on the blade that usually goes anywhere five to ten dollars more uh, they do have many other variants I do have one other example here I will show you guys in a few minutes but getting right into it here uh, I want to show you guys some size comparisons give you guys an idea just some knives that most people will have All right, first up here we're gonna do this is the steel wheel cut jack this one is in D2 steel and give you guys a little rough idea of size then we also have very common a lot of people will have the spider coat delica this comes with vg10 steel very common knife a lot of people will have is the ontario rat one this is a very similar size knife probably the closest in size of all the knives we'll be looking at here and then we have the spider coat i'm um, sorry the steel will modus the Rat 2 by Ontario. And then finally, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. But this is the purple version, the one with the S110V blade steel. This one goes for about 40 to $50 more than the base model here. But this is the one we will be discussing. Now this is a really cool knife. It, is, it does have a lot of fun um, with the fidget factor with it because you do have the compression lock where it's very similar to a liner lock, but instead of being in the front of the blade, you do have the lock right in the back. Uh, it just provides you a lot of fun. And it actually, if you do think about it, it's a little bit safer because when you close the knife, unlike with the liner lock, you do not have to put your hand or fingers in the blade cutting path as you close it. And that's just fun to... Um, and then, like with my last review, I just want to specify this does not have the factory grind on it. Um, whenever I do get a knife, I do put my own edges on them. Um, but for the sake of future testing with new knives I get, I will wait to sharpen them. And I will do reviews with the factory edge to show how, I mean, how you will be getting them if you do decide to buy them. Um, this one, I did put a mirror polish on it. And this thing is extremely slicey. Now this knife, you do have a full flat grind, so which means the thickness of the knife at the top, it just tapers all the way down. Um, unlike if you look at the steel wheel modus here, the part right there that is shadow, this is a high flat grind. So it just means once you get where that shadow ends, it starts to taper down. Whereas with the full flat grind, it tapers from the spine all the way down to the edge. And also the same with the steel wheel cut jack. It's the same with the high saber grind. And then right where that shadow, the shiny part up here you're seeing, that is the swedge. But this highlighted portion here is the high flat grind and then the taper downwards towards your cutting edge. Now just to show a few things like with the last review, just some of the cutting potential with it. So we're going to use our famous pretty zip ties again. And you will see that these just slices right through. In a moment, we'll bring you over to the cutting board to show you some other examples I have here. Then we'll do the wire cut test. I feel like that is a good demonstration. So just with the twine again, see these cuts right through. And then we'll do the double up. Oh, this is all tangled. You see we have the two, it just goes right through. This is a very good slicing knife, especially with that flat grind on it. One thing it is really good for is I do do, um, whenever I do any cooking or food prepping, I do like to use the pocket knives that I'm carrying. And I found this one actually does very well. 
Uh, the only downside, just, you know, when you have a three inch edge, you know, if you're cutting larger tomato stuff like that. Um, but for smaller stuff, you know, slicing up smaller apples or peeling apples, stuff like that, these actually do work really well. I do enjoy using my knives for tasks like that. I, know I generally don't like to use cooking knives. I'm not sure why. Of all the knives that exist, I don't know why. Cooking knives never really, really got into. But I do like cooking. I don't get it. Um, see, it's just a lot of fun to play with. Uh, and this knife actually is pretty easy to disassemble. Um, at some point in the future, I do want to start doing some disassembly videos. And with just a basic uh, precision screwdriver set, you can take these apart. But we'll, we'll go through all that in a future video. Show you the stuff that I like to use. Now, getting to some more stuff. I'm just going to bring you down here a little bit. And I'll show you on the cutting board here. Just slicing right through. Let's see we'll go. I'm trying to do it without shaking you guys too much. Going with the yeah, with the electrical wire. It just goes right through. You can do your push cuts or your slicing cuts. And that's one thing I do love with these higher end steels. There is absolutely zero edge damage. The spot that we were cutting still has a beautiful edge on it and it's still just as sharp as before. Granted, we were cutting copper wire, not steel wire. Uh, at some point, I do want to get some, cop uh, some steel wire and we'll do a comparison review on that and how well they work. You know, another thing too, a lot of people will be up against, well, using their pocket knives cardboard it just slices right through and also a good benefit I really like with the Spyderco knives instead of having the thumb studs as we discussed with the Benchmade 560 Freak review just gonna use this example here um, the with the Ontario Rat 2 your thumb studs one difference is though their thumb studs are right out of the cutting path if you can see it's actually behind the plunge grind where they start the full flat grind. Let's see if I have. I actually don't have any blade path interruptions. But for the sake of argument, most of the time with thumb studs, you will have the thumb studs will be in the cutting path. But with your paramilitary two, just like all other Spider Co knives, you have your the trademark Spidey hole, so this never interrupts your cutting path at all. And you just slice oh, right through, go for a longer cut here. Oh, oh my god, I almost hit you guys. So you're just slicing right through, and you do not have to ever worry about your thumb studs getting in your cutting path. So if you're cutting things very quickly, you just want to get it done. You can go pretty much any pace. And you are golden. Alright. Oh, speaking of golden, this is also made in their golden Colorado factory. I know I do love their sense of humor. This is golden Colorado, USA, Earth. Very specific, but in case you were ever wondering. Uh, they do have four main factories. They have one in Taiwan, China, uh, Japan, and then Golden Colorado. Um, I do have examples of spider codes from all their factories. And I have to say, I really love Spyderco's quality control. Um, I have heard some people say different factories have better quality coming out of the factory. I haven't personally found that to be a case. I do have seven or eight Spyderco's and have anywhere from one to two from each of the factories. I found them all to have very, very similar or very equal quality control. I have no complaints ever on any of the spider codes that I've bought. They've all come with dead center lining, um, dead center blade centering. Uh, this one here, this knife I have taken apart quite a few times and you know messed around with it, used it, put it above and beyond what you should use some knives for and the knife centering has always remained dead center on this. Um, I know for some people it's not as big of a deal. Um, I generally don't mind. For me it's just a little bit of an OCD thing sometimes, at least when I first get the knife. But 
over time and usage, it just, you know, it happens. For me, as long as the blade is not rubbing against the handle, I generally don't mind. Uh, but most of the time, just with playing with the knife pivot or just with through disassembly and reassembly, the knife will, the knives that I have, I have found will generally go either right back to dead center or close enough to it most people wouldn't even notice. All right. Now, what is it that you want to get a knife like this for? Why do you want to spend $120 on a knife, $130? You know, I mean, you are getting things that you won't just get in a regular Walmart knife that you get for 5 or 10 bucks. I mean, that might not be a big deal for you, you know? Some people, yeah, you know, it's a five, ten dollar knife. It gets dull, throw it away, buy another one. You know, maybe not everybody wants to go and sharpen a knife, but I find that it is very worth it. I mean, you do have when you start getting into these higher end steels, you know, you do start getting much superior edge retention, overall quality of the knife. I mean, G10 handles is a very, very tough material, and also to say this knife also for the weight of it for the size of it the weight is really not too bad at all um, you do get very good grip on it uh, what I do like not everybody does but I do like having a finger troil on some knives I mean I can generally live without it but if it has it you know what there are moments especially because I like to do a lot of wood carving and I like to use non-typical carving knives sometimes this does offer itself very well for if you want to choke up on the blade and get in for your very fine carving work when you just want to take bits of material off but then again you don't need to use that troil just choke back down on the blade and you do get a very good grip this knife is very very well made I really cannot say enough about the knife um, I know it seems so far every knife that I've talked about on the channel be it review or in general I seem to love all the knives but before I buy a knife I do a lot of research on it if I handle it, if I go to a store and it has it there, I'll handle it. So generally, I really don't, I've never really bought a knife that I've been dissatisfied with. You know, because I enjoy the research. I like watching different videos, different channels. It's one of the reasons why I started doing this channel. Hopefully help some people out that have questions or want to see what they can find out about a knife before spending the money. Especially, too, I mean, that's a very good point. This is a $120 to $130 knife. You know, it's not like one of those five, ten, you know, under twenty dollar knives you can get at Walmart or most other, you know, department stores. So I mean, that is a bit of an investment. And but and again, not everybody has to be like me and spend thousands of dollars over, you know, a few years picking up all different knives. Or I mean, in the case of this, <laughs> bought two of the same knife. I loved it so much, I bought a second one, and I'm actually looking at getting more. You know, I do. I love this platform. You know, and that's one thing I do love with the Paramilitary 2 in general. They do make, they do different sprint runs and all different steels, all different handles. Um, I think one I, I would love to one day, but they're close up around $200 in the Maximit steel. But what I might get after this, the next Paramilitary 2 at some point, I might get the S35VN version. I do want to do some testing on S30V versus S35VN, and I do want to do it on this platform because this is a great knife and I really enjoy using it I this is the knife I probably carry I mean compared to all the knives that I carry this one is probably in my pocket at least 50% of the time whereas all my other knives that I carry you know there's probably about 10 knives that I swap in and out of my pocket on a regular basis carry for a couple weeks swap out another one this one is in my pocket 50% of the time whereas the other knives you know probably 5% of the time it's nothing to do anything wrong with those knives I do love those knives um, but I just I love this one I love carrying it and it fits all my tasks uh, the one thing with it I do like to be a little more careful with as you can see this does have a very very thin tip on it so it is something that you do want to be a little careful of whereas with a, as I said with my Benchmade Freak I do enjoy using it for a multitude of tasks, of prying open paint cans, stuff like that. I do not pry with this knife. This is a hard use knife, but just that very thin tip does lend itself extremely useful in a lot of things, but I do also have that air of caution while I am using it on certain things just because I do not want to snap my tip off on this. All right, getting around. Trying to see if there's some other stuff, but 
I mean, this is a really well-made knife. I honestly cannot say enough about it. There are so many different knives that you can get, but if I could only, if I had to go and buy only one pocket knife, I could have one pocket knife for the rest of my life. And it's funny, this isn't even necessarily my absolute favorite pocket knife. It's definitely in my top three. But if I could only buy one pocket knife, and that's the one I carry for the rest of my life, it would be the paramilitary two, at least as of right now in this video, until I find something else, I guess. But, you know, being a knife collector, user, and everything, there are always a bunch of knives that are coming through my hands. But for right now, for the, like I said, the last year and a half to two years that I've had this, this one has been my number one. This has been my main girl. I love this knife. Like I said, that's why I bought a second one. I've actually been starting to carry this one a bit more. Um, the purple, it is a very nice color, but I think I kind of like the black better. I've actually considered maybe swapping the blades on these so I can get the S110V on the S30V platform. But anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some good information. Um, sorry if I rambled a little bit there. I do get very into these. I do at some point, too, want to start doing just videos for more of the knife nerds, just rambling probably videos would be like half hour 45 minutes or longer and where it's just literally i'll just have a bunch of knives laid out and just talking about them um just for the fun of it because you know i have a sickness and i enjoy getting this stuff i need to get it out there i don't know that many people that are into knives like i am that are you know in person versus online so this is also a good this is very therapeutic and cathartic for me to be able to talk about these knives I mean, even if no one watches these videos, just me being able to say and speak these things out because, oh man, I just love talking about them so much. Anyway, guys, I really hope you got a lot out of this. Um, I really hope you at least consider checking out the Paramilitary 2 or Spyderco in general. Uh, they do also have Spydercos, some of the Chinese-made ones. Uh, you can get for, you know, the $30 to $50 range. So if you don't want to jump right in, on spending a hundred plus dollars on a knife in general, let alone a Spider Co. You know, I think some of those knives, like the uh, Tenacious, the Resilience, you can get those for in like around the $40 range. You know, those are good entry Spider Co's. If you want to spend even less than that, they do also have the Bird series of knives that Spider Co makes. It's their more budget line where most of their knives are in the $20 to $30 range, some even less. But most of them are based on already loved spider co knives that people have been buying and enjoying for years but if like i said you don't want to if you want to drop 20 25 dollars and see how you like a knife versus jumping right into spending 100 plus that is a good way to go i will be getting some bird knives to check those out compared to some of the spider co knives do some of the budget spider co's versus their entirely budget line of the bird knives and it's bird b y r d if you are interested in looking those up. I really hope you enjoyed this video and got some good information out of it. Hopefully this helped with any decision making you might be if you are considering this knife. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I really hope you were able to get some fun information out of this here. Oh, this is such a good knife. Oh, I just can't stop. Alright guys, you have a great one.